What's going on folks, Ted from Nerd Immersion here, and today I'd like to talk to you about two really awesome gaming products to help uh, your D&D campaign, or specifically your in-person campaigns and games, be a little smoother, maybe alleviate some of the issues you might have, and I've definitely seen some of these in my own games. And that are these two awesome products from Lynx, that's L-Y-N-X, over, uh, I actually picked them up on uh, Amazon, and it's these two products right here. We have the RPG Condition Rings here, and the Potion Dice and Tokens here. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and bring them in closer, but it's funny enough, I actually picked up a copy of these Condition Rings myself uh, before they had ever reached out. By the way, thank you to them for sponsoring this video. And I wanted to showcase both products here. And I mean, you can see that the packaging is also top notch. The colors are fantastic for both. Uh, and we'll bring these in close and talk about them in just a sec. But I did want to just do a quick uh, jump over to Amazon to show you that they are here and you can pick them up for yourself. There will be Amazon affiliate links in the description. The condition rings will run you $39, so there is a coupon as of me recording this and the healing potions will run you $21. They're both prime shippable, so you should be able to get them potentially in time for your next D&D game. So let's talk about the Lynx RPG condition rings. So first of all, they are just that, condition rings. They are little rings that will fit around the base of a medium size or small size traditional D&D mini. They are made out of a very resilient and bendable plastic or perhaps rubber material. And you can see that bounced back to shape, no problem. And they come in a variety of distinct colors, all with different names of different condition, <clears throat> excuse me, things that you could apply either to yourself or to other characters on the field. We are actually using these currently in my Tuesday game, uh, Scalebound, where we have a, uh, we basically have four characters in play, a monk, a barbarian, a cleric, and a wizard. So for example, this one here says raging, and you can even see that without me bringing these in close to show them off. So this would sit on the barbarian to let you know that the barbarian is currently raging. And then again, that would be on the character to remember that, you know, what raging means. But I'll tell you this one, stunned has been the one that's gotten the most use, me playing the monk using stunning strike. And it's actually gotten to the point in the game where we're so used to using these that when the condition rings aren't accurate to the enemies on the board, sometimes we're actually forgetting that. So it goes both ways, but you know, if I'm out there with a monk, this is with four attacks with flurry of blows, potentially stunning f up to four creatures a turn, knowing which ones are stunned is critical. Because if I stun two of the four and there's four enemies on the field, and the DM says number one and number three are stunned, I can plop this on those enemies. And now we know basically ignore them when it comes to combat, and we're gonna have advantage on those attack rolls. Uh, and that's really, really important stuff because let me tell you, and I'm, I've experienced this relatively recently, and I'm sure you have in your game, combat goes on, it's someone's turn, they do a thing, it goes on like two turns later and somebody goes, ah, crap, they were stunned the whole time. And then you get into that sort of, D I don't even know, I guess we can call it D&D chicken of, do you ask the DM if it's okay if we retcon things that just happened? And the DM goes, do I retcon the things that just happened? Because in theory, if this character was stunned and you went to attack them and you missed a couple of times, all of your attacks should have been an advantage because that creature was stunned and you wouldn't know. Uh, and you didn't do that and like a turn or two has passed and then it's do we go back when that's where again, things like these condition rings will help alleviate that because you'll know, oh, they're very clearly stunned, I can see that. Another big one that's not so much useful, um, my team and my players are really good about this, concentrating is another one. And this, again, to show you that it's not just conditions that you're applying to the enemies, concentrating, right? You're concentrating on a spell. This is probably more to help the DM, right? If I hit you and you're concentrating, I need to know to make you make con uh, concentration checks to see if you are able to maintain whatever spell you have up or you know whatever buff you have on a fellow party member, things of that nature. So I think if we go back to uh, the, uh, the Amazon page, we can take a look at what all of they are rather than me showing them off, but 
Here you can see we have Blessed, Blinded, Charmed, Concentrating, Cursed, Deafened, Enlarged, Exhausted, Frightened, Grappled, Hastened, Hexed, Hunters Marked, uh, Incapacitated, Invisible, Paralyzed, Petrified, Poisoned, Raging, Restrained, Stunned, Unconscious, and then two kind of wild cards there at the end, Magical Effect and Physical Effect. I also really appreciate the forethought to include two extras, that the Magical and Physical Effect here, because... There are probably instances, depending on if you have homebrew stuff, or even within the course of the game as it is, where you may encounter something that the party isn't prepared for or the rings don't cover. For example, one that I can think of is slowed, right? If someone casts, we have one for hasten, someone casts haste on themselves or someone else, but let's say someone casts the slow spell or has a slowing ability. You wouldn't know, but you could drop the magical effect ring on them and then they you know you might look at it and say wait wait they have a magical effect what is that and then you go oh okay it's slowed we could talk about what that does so everybody's aware and this is definitely i think a, a great tool and we can show off a little bit here of them on the field in these images here right see around the base of a mini and then kind of looped around some of the larger creatures here but very clear and very easy to see we can even see these on the really crappy webcam that we're using for our battle cam in our games something we're looking to update in the future. But these, as you can see, the colors are very vibrant. Uh, I will say some of them do, at least in this camera, do seem to be a little closer. We do have quite a few blues, but you know, on you can read what they are, which takes away from the fact, but you know, and if you can very clearly tell if they were on a multiple mini, you could say, okay, that's two different shades of blue. What are the two conditions on them? Uh, like I said, they are quite sturdy. You saw me kind of bend one before, and I can maybe bend one on the close-up cam if you want to see. But there's no issue. You know, you know, if you're stacking multiples on top of a medium miniature, you might run into an issue where you couldn't read it, so you might have to start hanging them off the sides. Uh, but the other thing is, this is a... It's a niche tool, right? You know, if you are... Obviously, it's not if you're doing a virtual tabletop, this isn't for you. Uh, but if you're playing in person, this is a fantastic aid to have. And I've gone through various iterations of doing this myself. I used to do the old rip the rings off of the soda bottles and try to get a bunch of different soda bottle rings to have on hand. But I never knew what, you know, I have red soda bottles from a Mountain Dew Code Red or, or Coca-Cola bottle or something. You get green one from regular Mountain Dew, blue. You have all these different rings and you're like, okay, you get some from a milk carton maybe or, you know, yellow milk. And you're like, what do I use these for? And then you put one on a character and they're like, okay, they've got something on them. But then you forget what it is because it doesn't tell you. You're just putting rings on something. And then I have a 3D printer. I was going to look into 3D printing some for myself. I mean, I've got 96 rings here. Now, these are not super thick, so it wouldn't take too, too long to 3D print these. But then am I going to be cycling filament every so many rings? Am I going to be painting these? And that to me is just a hassle that I don't have time for. So being able to pick them all up in a nice neat set where I can just put the box on this, I can throw this in a bag, take this to a convention. It also lists out all of them on the back here if you wanted to know what they all were inside and also has a color guide again on the back here. But I think this is a fantastic tool. And like I said, as the best testament that I can give to these Lynx condition rings is that I went out and bought them on my own for use in my own game because I thought they were so useful before they even reached out for a sponsorship situation here. So let's now, uh, let's talk about the Lynx RPG potion and tokens. This in a similar vein to things that are a nice to have product that again are relatively inexpensive. And in this instance, you're also just getting D4 dice, which is also pretty great. Now I can't really showcase these too well from here, but I can point them out. So you can see very clearly, we have sort of a, a sort of, a, reminds me a lot of fruit snacks, I guess, but a, a color variant here of these little shaped potion bottles, which you can kind of see. And again, I'll put these up close. And then over here, our potion bottle, almost like milk bottle shaped uh, D4s. So at the very least, you are getting multiple D4s in here, 24 D4 in this box. So, I mean, $21 for 21 D4 isn't a bad deal, period, uh, let alone custom-shaped D4. Now, I've also said it before, pyramid-shaped D4, I hate them. 
Uh, one, if you've ever stepped on one, you know that's enough reason, first of all, right at the gate. And two, I often find myself having a hard time picking them up where I'll just like slide off the top of the pyramid. So I like more interesting shaped D4, and these guys definitely do it. But not only that, you have these little potions, little potion charms or tokens, if you will, and associated color dice. And what those are, and what's contained underneath all of these, if I pull these out, are little cards showing the different types of healing potions. So you can see right here, superior healing is, and they have it color coded to that red color, heals 8d4 plus 8 HP. And then if we were to go to this one, we have greater healing, right? Everybody knows that, the kind of orange one here, 4d4 plus 4 healing. And the thought process is you could take these tokens and give them out to your players and they can keep them on the table. Now, it may make sense to pick up multiple ver versions of this to have multiple boxes, depending on how many players you have. But you know, okay, I've got two regular healing potions and a greater healing potion. And then I can just have these on the table in front of me. I've got two of these, regular healing and a greater healing. And I will tell you, and I'm sure some of you are aware of this, similar in vain to what we talked about about condition rings, having these potion bottles on the table as a representation of what you physically have is fantastic. They're also small, they don't take up a lot of space, and you can kind of keep these all in one little box and then share the pool of dice around as need be. Now, for those of you who are gonna say things like, you can track it in a digital form if you have a digital character sheet or just on, you know, handwritten on a piece of paper. Well, yes, you could, but I've seen when I use digital character sheets, I sometimes just forget to uncheck uh, how many potions I have, or depending on the system, it may not be a really easy way for you to add multiple versions of different kinds of healing potions. Different systems are different. You might have different issues there, uh, but you know, having physical trackers makes things a little bit easier. Uh, and again, obviously, if you have a pen and paper or you know pencil and paper and you're constantly erasing to adjust the number of potions you have, you can obviously erase right through your character sheet. So having these is, I think, a nice little way to get around that. So here you can see one of the, uh, well, actually all the various different potion bottles here, starting off with the yellow being the standard healing potion, orange being greater, Red, uh, here you can also see the cards that I was mentioning before, uh, the red being the uh, superior and the kind of purplish being uh, the supreme. And here you can see the different D4s that are also color coded that go along with the various potion bottles. So you'll have the corresponding amount for the yellow, the regular healing potion, you'll have two for the greater four, uh, and then eight for the superior and 10 for the supreme. And you can see again a little close up look to see how these again look to be sort of almost like a milk bottle in shape. And I'd say they're relatively balanced in the grand scheme of any kind of crystalline non pyramidal shaped D4s. Uh, here you can see there's a handful more of these. Uh, there's a total of six of the uh, regular healing potions. My only sort of potential nitpick downside would be the most common type of potion that you have access to is usually a regular healing potion, which is represented by the six tokens you see on screen. And you only have the two dice for that, which is a bummer, but if you're gonna be, you're really probably only gonna be drinking one potion at a time anyway. Uh, so, you know, here you see I roll these and that would be five hit points healed. Uh, but what I'm starting to think is, while well, I was thinking about having one set of these at the table that you could just, again, roll around and use accordingly, uh, and then basically just take the dice and put them back in the box that they came in when they're done, or perhaps you'll get some sort of unique receptacle for like expended dice or expended potions and you put the potion bottles, uh, the tokens in that. I think that really, I mean, I don't know much more I could say about this, but I think uh, it would be more beneficial for everybody to get their own set of these. And again, as I said, for $21, getting 24 D4 is not a bad call. And then again, if every player had a set of these dice, they'd have their own separated potion dice ready to go. They'd have the cards that tell them what the things, uh, what the different potions do, so they don't need to look that up. And again, they wouldn't really have to worry too much about what kind or how many dice 
per type of healing potion because they've got them all color coded right here. Realistically, this could make a great gift for a player or even for a DM, but to have a set of these myself is just something that I have for me. When I get potions, I can set up all my little potion tokens and then go from there. And I, I guess I'll also say for folks that are, are say, this is also, they don't take up a lot of space, right? The whole box is like, it's this big, you know, it's not, you know, it's, I don't know, I have a deck of cards here. Give you a comparison, right? But I've seen people in the past do ones where they do like a jar with the individual dice in them. And that, while in theory is nice, is a little complicated because you have all of your dice inside a little jar for a specific potion, which means you need to buy that many jars, that many dice, and then they're also usually large and cumbersome. They take up a large area. Whereas this is concise and you have everything that you need. So, um, I don't know. Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. I really, really like these uh, potion dice and tokens. Uh, so, I think these are awesome. And again, I also think the condition rings are awesome as well. You should definitely go and check out the Amazon affiliate links in the description. And a huge thank you once again to the Lynx team for sending these over for review purposes and for sponsoring this video.